Hi everyone. Today we're going to be learning about the concepts of mass and weight. And we're going to be talking about how, although they are related to one another, they're actually different concepts. And they're often confused for one another. So here's a video explaining the difference. First, what's mass? Mass can be defined as a measurement of the amount of matter that an object possesses. So if you took an object and you looked at all the atoms that make it up, and you counted up all of the protons, neutrons, and electrons that make up the atoms that make up that object, what you would be adding up and totaling is the mass of the object. That's the amount of stuff that's in it. Here's an example of mass in humans. This is a famous actor, Christian Bale, who's well known for changing the shape and form of his body drastically in order to play very different characters. On the left, you can see his portrayal of a character in a movie called The Machinist. And then just a year later, he plays Batman, Bruce Wayne. Um, and the difference between these two characters is really, really drastic. So how did he accomplish changing his body in this really dramatic way? Well, in order to prepare for the first film in 2004, he ate very little food and got very little exercise and activity, so he wasn't gaining much muscle mass. And how did he prepare just a year later to play Batman, who is literally a superhero? Uh, well, he had lots and lots of calories and exercised every single day. So the difference between these is literally mass. And you can actually track Christian Bale throughout his movie, um, his, his own Christian Bale cinematic universe here. And you can actually see that his mass in kilograms changed very drastically each time. You can see in American Psycho, he was about 81 kilograms of mass and then just a little higher, 83 for Reign of Fire in 2002, and then dropped significantly to 55 kilograms for The Machinist, up again for Batman, down for Rescue Dawn, back up for Batman again in The Dark Knight, down again for The Fighter, and then back up to 90 kilograms for his final outing as The Dark Knight. So this is really impressive, but it's worth noting that repeatedly dieting and then bulking back up is not healthy for your body. This can mess with your metabolism. So unless you're an actor who's dedicated your life to portraying lots of different shapes of characters, this is something you definitely want to avoid. And in fact, I'd, I would wager that even Christian Bale's agent would prefer he doesn't do this. But if you're committed, I guess go for it. Um, this is another famous actor. This person's name is Christian Bale. It's actually the same guy. Uh, he just put on a lot of weight for this character. Talk about commitment. He's portraying the former Vice President Dick Cheney here in a movie called Vice. Um, pretty impressive, again. So that's mass. That means changing the amount of stuff in your body. How is it different from weight? Well, weight is actually a type of force. It's a push or a pull, specifically a pull caused by gravity. So weight could be defined as the amount of force that gravity pulls on an object with. I'm going to give you a couple examples of how to think about weight so you know how to make it different in your mind from mass. Well, first, you should know that gravity pulls down on all objects that have mass. And even that really is an oversimplification. Gravity pulls objects towards each other's centers. And because to us, the Earth is below us, it seems like gravity pulls down. Scales are something that we use commonly to measure this downward force of gravity. And you should know that it's weight that makes large or dense objects difficult to lift. It's not necessarily that an object has lots of mass and therefore it's hard to lift. It's the weight of the object that makes it challenging to lift up. Now, since weight is a type of force, um, it can be calculated. We can figure out exactly how, how much weight something has. So there's a formula for it. The formula that we would use is known as Newton's second law of motion. And it states that any force that's being applied to an object must be equal to its mass multiplied by the acceleration that it's experiencing due to something that's causing it to accelerate, in this case, gravity. So that's Newton's second law of motion, which can be applied to so many different scenarios. If we want to customize this equation to solve for the weight of an object specifically, then we need to change some of the letters around a little bit to represent this specific type of force. So this is the second law of motion, but specifically for weight. You can see that I've switched out the letter F for W because weight is a kind of force. And you can see that I've swapped out the letter A for the letter G because gravity is something that causes objects to accelerate. So G is a kind of A and W is a kind of F. So I've just swapped these out. Again, W stands for weight, and it's given in units of Newtons, named after Isaac Newton, because Newton is the unit for any kind of force, and weight is a force. G, as a reminder, stands for gravitational acceleration. And on Earth, the rate at which you will accelerate towards the Earth due to gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared, towards the Earth. 
Now that number is going to change depending on where you're located. If you go up on a tall mountain, that number would reduce a little bit. And if you go down into a deep valley, that number might rise a little bit. It also can change if you go from planet to planet. More on that later. Here's two animations that explain weight. On the left, you can see there's a scale and some mass of some kind is being dropped onto the right hand side of that scale. And so it tips down. Now, is it the mass or is it the weight that causes the scale to tip? Well, it's the weight because weight is the pull of gravity that is caused by things having mass. So although that mass on the right is indirectly causing the scale to tip, the thing that directly causes the scale to tip is its weight, the weight of gravity pulling on that stuff. On the right, you can see a clip from the movie Toy Story. Mr. Potato Head is trying to lift up a barbell. And these things on either side, the weights we would sometimes call them, um, the thing that they actually contain is mass. And because they have mass, gravity therefore pulls on them. And that pull of gravity, which we call weight, is the thing that's actually making it hard for Mr. Potato Head to lift it up. So now that you've seen the difference between mass and weight, here's how they're related. Again, the weight of an object is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by gravitational acceleration. So here's three celestial objects you're probably familiar with, Earth, the Moon, and Jupiter. And these three celestial bodies are different masses, and as a result, they have different amounts of gravity. Earth has sort of a medium amount of gravity, the Moon has less gravity than Earth, and Jupiter, being a much larger planet, has a lot of gravity. So we're going to do kind of a thought experiment here. We're going to put a scale on each of these planets, and I'm going to plop a 60 kilogram person on top of that scale on each planet, and we'll see how their weight changes. So here's our mass of 60 kilograms on a planet that has an acceleration due to gravity of 9.81 meters per second squared. How much weight would this person have on this planet? Well, look at the equation. Weight equals mass times gravity. So we'll take the 60 kilograms of mass, multiply it by the 9.81 meters per second squared of gravity, and multiplying those together, you get 588.6. So that number represents the newtons of weight that the person is going to be pulled down with as a result of gravity. So what would this be in American units? Um, if we're not using the metric system, that'd be approximately 132 pounds. We don't really use pounds in our physics class, but just to give you an idea of kind of how much weight that is. So that's on Earth. What if we put that same person on the moon? Well, you've probably seen footage before of astronauts walking on the moon and they're kind of bouncing around. It seems like they can jump high very easily and that's because there's less gravity. So this 60 kilogram person on the moon is only gonna be experiencing this much gravity, 1.62 um, meters per second squared. So that's a much lower number than 9.81, that means there's less gravity on the moon. So if we multiply this mass by this gravity, then this person standing on a scale on the moon, the scale is only gonna read 97.2 newtons of weight or approximately 22 pounds. So if you jump from Earth to the moon, suddenly your weight changes very drastically. Finally, if we put this person on Jupiter, where the acceleration due to gravity is a hefty 24.79 meters per second squared, um, that's the rate at which things will fall on Jupiter. So if you drop an object, phew, it's gonna fall really quickly. This mass multiplied by this acceleration due to gravity gives a staggering weight of 1,487.4 newtons or approximately 337 pounds. And what you should notice is between all these three examples, mass does not actually change based on what planet you're on. Instead, weight changes. That's based on how much gravity the planet has. So if you eat a giant cheeseburger, are you gonna gain weight? Yes. Are you gonna gain mass? Yes. Why did they happen? Well, it's because you gained mass from eating the sandwich. And then as a result of your increased mass, you also end up with more weight. But if you jump from planet to planet, your mass is not going to change, but your weight will change because gravity changed. So these three variables are all kind of working together in interesting ways. Here's a sample problem that uses these principles, and we'll end on this once we find our answer. Jerry, who normally weighs 850 newtons, or approximately 190 pounds, if you're curious, promised his wife that he would get his weight down to 800 newtons within a month. Unfortunately, Jerry spent the whole month playing video games rather than sticking to his exercise routine. In order to lose lots of weight quickly, he travels to Mars, where the gravitational acceleration is only 3.71 meters per second squared. How much will Jerry weigh on Mars? And will his promise be fulfilled? So let's see if Jerry's gonna fare well in his next conversation with his wife. Um, what do we need to know? Well, they're asking us how much Jerry's going to weigh on Mars 
So we're probably going to need that equation for weight, which is weight equals mass times gravity. We know how much gravity there is on Mars, but do we know his mass to go into that calculation? Well, we know his weight, but no, we don't know his mass. So that's the first thing we're going to have to figure out is the mass of Jerry. So I'm pulling out that weight equation, but I'm going to use uh, data from Earth first so I can identify what his mass is. So the equation says his weight on Earth will be equal to his mass, which is the same number everywhere. It doesn't matter what planet he's on multiplied by the gravitational acceleration of Earth. So I know two of these three numbers, so I'm going to plug them in. Jerry's weight on Earth is 850 newtons. His mass, again, is unknown to us. We're going to solve for that. And gravity on Earth is 9.81 meters per second squared. If I do 850 and I divide that by 9.81, then I can figure out that Jerry's mass, wherever he is in the universe, is 86.65 kilograms. So now I can transfer that number over to Mars, because as we discussed, when you jump from planet to planet, your weight changes, but not your mass, unless you were to eat an asteroid along the way, and in which case your mass would change. That doesn't happen in this situation. So let's now take that same weight equation that we used for Earth, and let's use it with data for Mars. The final thing we're looking for is how much will Jerry weigh? So now it's that blue weight value that we're calculating. So the weight on Mars will equal Jerry's mass multiplied by gravity on Mars, Let's plug in the number that we just got in step one, which was his 86.65 kilograms of mass. And let's multiply it by gravity on Mars, which was given in the question as 3.71 meters per second squared. Multiplying those two numbers, we get an answer of 321.46 newtons is his weight on Mars. So the question was, how much will Jerry weigh on Mars? Here's our answer to that question, 321.46. And the second part of the question was, will his promise be fulfilled? Well, what was his promise? He promised his wife he would get his weight down to 800 newtons within a month, and 321 is definitely less than 800, so that's much more impressive than what he promised. So, did he fulfill his promise? Uh, technically, um, I think that conversation with his wife is probably not going to go so well. Just so that you know, when you technically fulfill a promise to your wife, uh, you will technically be in big trouble. So, I would say technically yes and technically no to this one. So I hope this video was helpful in terms of learning the difference between mass and weight. Remember that mass is the amount of stuff in your body, and weight is how hard gravity is pulling on you as a result of your mass and as a result of gravity. So hope that was helpful. See you in the next video.